हेलो क्लास टेंथ होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल टुडे वी स्टार्ट विद आर फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ केमिस्ट्री दैट इज केमिकल रिएक्शन एंड इक्वेजन सो आर फर्स्ट टॉपिक ऑफ दिस चैप्टर इज व्हाट इज केमिकल रिएक्शन सो बेसिकली द केमिकल रिएक्शन इज द प्रोसेस इन विच द ओरिजिनल सब्सटैंस लूज देयर नेचर and identity and form new chemical substance with different properties so the process involving a chemical change is called chemical reaction in next slide we come to know how chemical reaction occurs so in this slide let's take the example of water the molecular formula of water is h2o and how it is formed when hydrogen gas combine with oxygen gas it form h2o talking about the properties of all three hydrogen gas is used as a fuel oxygen gas act as the supporter of combustion whereas water act as a fire extinguisher so we can conclude that the reactant have completely different properties from the product so here the chemical reaction has been occurred now the next topic is how chemical change is different from physical change so in physical change no new chemical substances are formed let's take the example of melting of ice in this image you can also see that when the ice melt there is no formation of new product the another example is evaporation of water whereas in case of chemical change a new substance is formed for example rusting of iron now in this slide we will come to know what are the factors which prove that chemical change has been occurred the first factor is presence of a new color so the first property which shows that the chemical reaction occur is the change in color the second property is the formation of a precipitates now what are precipitates precipitates are the insoluble substance in the solution now we will see how there is the change in color when the chemical reaction has been occurred let's take the example of iron nail when iron nail is dipped in copper sulfate solution whose color is blue when these two reactants combine with each other they will form feso4 that is iron sulfate you will see that the color of iron sulfate is green so when the reactant iron nail and copper sulfate which is of blue color react with each other a new substance is formed that is iron sulfate which possess completely different color so the next factor which prove that the chemical change has been occurred is the release of heat or light for example burning of crackers when you burn cracker it liberate a large amount of heat and light which proves that the chemical reaction has been occurred in it the next factor which prove that the chemical change has been occurred is the production of gas or bubbles for example you can see here that i dip magnesium ribbon in hydrochloric acid magnesium color is silver so when i dip the magnesium into hydrochloric acid the hydrogen gas is evolved and that gas can be seen in the form of bubbles 
so here the reactant is solid magnesium metal which is placed in the solution of hydrochloric acid and you will see the bubbles in the test tube the product formed after this reaction is hydrogen gas and magnesium chloride moving on to the next topic the next topic is what is chemical equation so we can define it as a shorthand method of representing a chemical reaction in terms of symbols and formula of different reactants and products now we will learn about the word or the symbol equation a chemical equation use either words or symbols and formulas to describe the change that occurs during the chemical reaction for example in the preparation of water we use hydrogen gas and oxygen gas so the first equation here is a word equation and if i formulate this equation then this is known as formula equation or skeleton equation so hydrogen gas is rewritten rewrite as h2 oxygen gas is rewrite as o2 and water is rewrite as h2o so after writing the chemical equation the next step is to maintain the law of conservation of mass which means that the total number of reactant must be equal to the total number of products as according to the law of conservation of mass in a chemical reaction the mass of the products always equal to the mass of the reactant in other words the mass is always conserved so now we will discuss how to write the chemical equation and the method to balance it for example the reaction of calcium with water the first step is to write the word equation so calcium when react with water it produce calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas so now we will rewrite it in the form of skeleton equation the symbol of calcium is ca in bracket we have the symbol s which represent that the calcium is in the state of solid react with water the molecular formula of water is h2o l represent that the state of water here is liquid the arrow represent that we are moving from reactant side towards the product side the product formed is calcium hydroxide the molecular formula of calcium hydroxide is ca oh twice plus hydrogen gas that is h2 after completing this step the next step is to balance the equation we can balance the equation by using simple hit and trial method one thing you always kept in your mind that while balancing the number you are going to add in the equation should always be placed at the very front side for example in the reaction which we discussed here the number of reactants are calcium is equals to 1 in the reactant side hydrogen 2 and oxygen 1 in right hand side we have one calcium two oxygen this two is multiplied hydrogen is equals to 4 because in calcium hydroxide we have two hydrogen and in hydrogen gas also we have two hydrogen so 2 plus 2 it is equals to 4 so 
to balance this equation first try by substituting 2 in front of water molecule so if i add 2 in front of water molecule then in reactant side we have 4 hydrogens and 2 oxygens in right hand side also we have 4 hydrogens and 2 oxygens so our chemical equation is now considered to be balanced. Let's discuss one more chemical equation example. For example, the chemical reaction between solid magnesium metal and hydrochloric acid. So our first step is to write the word equation. So magnesium plus hydrochloric acid arrow magnesium chloride plus hydrogen gas. Our next step is to write the formula equation or we can say that skeleton equation. So the symbol of magnesium is Mg plus hydrochloric acid molecular formula is HCl, magnesium chloride molecular formula is MgCl2 and hydrogen gas is symbolized as H2. Here notice that hydrogen is expressed in the formula equation as H2 as the pure hydrogen exists always in a diatomic form. Now you will need to know which element exists as the molecule while writing the chemical equation. Let's discuss some hints which help you while balancing the chemical equation. You may be able to treat polyatomic ion as a unit. For example, if in the reactant side you have nitrate ions that is NO3 negative. If NO3 negative appear in the reactant and the product of the skeleton equation, then count the number of NO3 negative group rather than the number of nitrogen and oxygen atoms separately. So now let's discuss one more example that is to balance the following equation in which aluminium bromide react with chlorine gas to form aluminium chloride and bromine gas. So first step is to write the word equation and the second step is to write the skeleton equation. So the formula of aluminium bromide is AlBr. 3. The S over here represent that we are taking this salt in the solid state. So when we pass chlorine gas from it, the products which are formed are aluminium chloride. The state of aluminium chloride here is solid and it release bromine gas that is Br2. Now the next step is to count the number of atoms in the reactant as well as in the product side. So the reactants that we have in our chemical equation is AlBr3 and the second reactant is Cl2. So in AlBr3 aluminiums are equals to 1, bromine is equals to 3 and chlorine is equals to in product side, we have two products AlCl3 and Br2, where aluminium is 1, chlorine is equals to 3, and bromine is equals to 2. So, now by using hit and trial method, balance the number of bromine atom by adding a coefficient of 2 in front of AlBr3 and a coefficient of 3 in front of bromine gas. Now count the number of atoms again. In reactant side we are adding 2 in front of aluminium bromide. So now the number of aluminium in reactant side is equals to 2 and number of bromine is equals to number of number 6. Now the chlorine number will remain same as we are not going to add any number in front of it. 
in product side i am adding 3 in front of bromine gas so now in product side the number of aluminum and chlorine remain same whereas the number of bromine are 6 so now still our equation is not balanced now balance the number of aluminum atom by adding a coefficient of 2 in front of AlCl3 which is in the product side and count the number of atoms again now we are adding 2 in front of AlCl3 so the number of aluminum in the product side is equals to 2 and chlorine is equals to 6 now we are left with only one atom that is chlorine which is not balanced as in reactant side the number of chlorine is equals to 2 and in product side the number of chlorine is equals to 6 so our next step is to balance the number of chlorine in both reactant and product side now to balance the number of chlorine atoms we can add a coefficient of 3 in front of chlorine gas so now if we add number 3 in front of chlorine in reactant side we will get number of chlorine is equals to 6 which is equals to the number of chlorine in product side so now our equation is two aluminum bromide react with three molecules of chlorine gas to form two molecules of aluminum chloride and three molecules of bromine gas now the equation is considered to be balanced as number of aluminum in reactant side is equals to 2 and again in product side the number of aluminum is equals to 2 the number of bromine in both sides that is in reactant and in product side is 6 and chlorine in reactant and product side is 6 so now our equation is considered to be balanced hope you all learn about how to balance the chemical equations now just try these three reactions as your homework balance the following chemical equation first aluminum react with fluorine to form aluminum fluoride second calcium react with water to form calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas third calcium chloride react with sodium phosphate to form calcium phosphate and sodium chloride thank you